Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 45. In this session, we will understand why enums are required and what are the problems of not using enums. Now, what is an enum? An enum is a strongly typed constant. Now, don't worry about what we mean by strongly typed constant. We'll understand that in a later session. In this session, we will basically see a very simple program you know and we will not use enums in that program and see what are the problems of not using enums and then we'll replace those integral numbers with enums in the next session okay so let's look at an example first now let's say i want to create a customer class so public class customer and this customer class is going to have two properties, auto-implemented properties. Again, if you're new to properties, please watch the video series, a session on properties. So public string customer name. And then this is going to be an auto-implemented property. So get and set. And similarly, I'm going to have another property. And this one is going to be an integer. And this property is going to be a gender. Now, so if the gender, see, if you look at the gender type, it's an integer. So if the gender is zero, then that means the gender is unknown. Similarly, if the gender is one, then it's male. If the gender is two, then it's female. Okay. Now let's say I want to create a customer array. So customer customers is equal to new customer array of let's say I want to hold three customers. And obviously since it's an array we have to use the square brackets. Now let's go ahead and create three customers and populate this array. So customers of zero is equal to new customer and name is equal to let's say mark and since mark is male we will pass in one okay so basically in the database you know we are storing these customers and customer name column is a var care column but whereas the gender column is an integer so obviously when you prepare these customer objects and pass them to the database or retrieve from the database you know you're moving these values in the form of integers and not strings so that's why our customer object has this property of type integer okay so we have one customer object similarly let's go and create two more customer objects so customer of one and this is going to be customer of two and customer of one let's say here it's Mary and since Mary is a female I'll put two there and finally Sam and Sam's gender is unknown so we will say zero okay now if you look at what we have done so far, we have just created a customer class and uh, we have created a customer array, three customer objects. Now, what I want you to do is basically print out the customer names and genders that are present in this array. And to do that, we can make use of a for each loop. So, for each, we can say customer, for each customer, and the variable is customer in customers collection what we want to do we want to print the customer's name and the gender so how do we do that console dot right line so name is equal to and gender is equal to at so name is equal to the customer object dot name and similarly we want the customer gender so we can say the customer object dot gender but if you look at the gender property that's an integer so it will print zeros and ones because 
these respective objects you are storing zeros and ones so the problem with that is when we display these to the user look at what's going to happen mark gender is one mary gender is two sam gender is zero so what's this it doesn't make sense so what we need to do is probably have another method and uh, to that method you pass in the gender you know which is nothing but zero one or two and that method decides okay if it is zero then it is unknown if it's one it's male and if it's two it's female so let's write that method now so let's go ahead and create that method uh, we will call that you know maybe get gender method so public static and the written type of this method is going to be string because it will return whether it is male, female, or unknown. And then we'll call this get gender. And into this we will pass the gender integer, whether if it is 0, 1, or 2. Now we can use switch here. So switch. And we will switch on the passed in gender integer. So gender. Now we know that if that gender is zero, so case zero, if it is zero, we want to return unknown. Similarly, if it is case one, then we want to return male. So case one, return male. And similarly, case two, return female and maybe default case if the passed in value is not 0 1 or 2 then we want to say return invalid data detected or something like that just to alert the users okay um, the number that's passed in is not unknown male or female so it's something strange it's wrong data okay now what we need to do we will call this method and pass in the gender id so we will say get gender and pass that now if we run this program you will see okay gender male female okay the output is fine but then if you look at this program, the problem is here. Now look at this. We have a set of related integers, you know, related numbers, 0, 1, 2. 0 means unknown, 1 means male, 2 means female. You know, how do we know that? Okay, if it is 0, then I want to do some processing for unknown. If it is 1, I have to do some processing for male. You know, unless and until you look at the database or some documentation, you will not know Zero, 0 corresponds to unknown, 1 corresponds to male, and 2 corresponds to female. Okay, and if you know, this is a very small program, and this is the only gender, uh, you know, we have only gender here, and we have those related numbers 0, 1, 2. Okay, but in reality, there may be several related integral numbers. You know, for example, I want to store, you know, that the directions like north, east, west, south, southeast, northeast, northwest, etc. And obviously, uh, to store all this, instead of storing strings, we are storing integers. Let's say 0 for east, 2 for west, 3 for north, etc. Then to remember all those numbers, you know, which number represents to which direction, you know, it's really difficult. The program, you know, becomes more and more, you know, uh, unmaintainable if you use these integral in, in you know numbers actually we have a better way of writing this program using enums which we'll be looking at in a later session in the next session in fact okay so this program is is less readable and because of this you know it becomes less maintainable as the application code grows and as we keep adding these related numbers, you know, it will become extremely confusing which numbers correspond, which values. Okay, so that's that's what you know. If you if if a program uses a set of integral numbers, then consider replacing them with enums. Otherwise, that program becomes extremely you know unreadable and unmaintainable as we go along. Okay, actually, in the next session, we will see how to replace you know these integral numbers here here as well as here 
Now, let's say for example, I'm creating another new customer object and he is male. How in this earth will I know male means one unless and until I go ahead and look the documentation here or in the database or in somewhere else. Okay, that's why it's easy if you replace these related numbers using enums, which makes your program more readable and more maintainable, which we'll be looking at in the next session. Here you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.